morning, everyone, and welcome to World Book Day 2022. <laughs> Um, today you've got some special tokens that you can uh, pick up from your tutor and you can take those down to Spencer Thorne, do H Smiths Smith, or Waterstones, if you can get the Waterstones in Truro or Exton, spend those. Also, there's a book sale on today, second-hand books being sold in the Bistro, £1 uh, for paperbacks, you can't use tokens for these ones, £2 for hardbacks, and though the money for that is going to the Ukraine crisis. Please make sure you pop down to the library, especially if you're dressed up, because we have lots of exciting things going on there. World Book Day is a really important time to start thinking about some of our own reading journeys. Um, I obviously, as the head of English, love to read. And for me, reading has a really special place in my heart. It's about being able to go on adventures and journeys without leaving the comfort of your room. And on the screen, you can see some of our favourite books. Um, I used to be an absolute addict for adventure stories. So starting off with The Magic Faraway Tree by Enid Blyton. I went to Mallory Towers um, on... Uh, which is a boarding school and it was a beautifully written story you just get one a year a bit like the harry potter series um and then as i got a little bit older on to nancy drew who was a fantastic detective i don't know if you ever read nancy drew i didn't read nancy drew were you more of a hardy boys uh, i was i was more into uh, i had a comic so that <laughs> my, my reading career. There is nothing wrong with comics. It gets you reading. Um, and some of the adventures that you might have heard of, The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe, going into Narnia, going to Neverland with Peter Pan, off to the wonderful land of Oz with Dorothy, or um, watching the trains and the railway children. There are some fantastic storybooks that got us, in, got us inspired. And hopefully you love going on adventures with your books too. So there's some amazing quotes about reading. Uh, one of the things that occurred to me just before we go through this, when Miss was talking on the previous slide, is that if you're lazy and you don't like to go anywhere, then reading's for you, isn't it? Because that's the easiest and cheapest way to travel. That's the most rubbish reason for reading I think if I've ever heard. If you live in Bude and there's no reason to go travelling because it's so great here, but you're interested in other places, pick up a book. Reading is to the mind what exercise is to the body, which I lovely, uh, which I love from Richard Steele. To learn to read is to light a fire. Every syllable that is spelled out is a spark. And I always remember that sort of idea when I was taught English literature uh, by my uh, my teacher at school. Uh, and we came across a line that said it was by Keats, winking, uh, brimming uh, bubbles, winking at the brim. This whole idea this, of things popping. And I always remember that really really clearly because of the syllables in that line there's more treasure in books than in all the pirates loot on treasure island that's definitely true i can remember almost every book i've ever read and they are like a treasure a book is like a garden carried in the pocket oh i quite like that i've never heard that one before no. this no. Oh. the things i want to know are in books my best friend is the man who'll get me a book uh abraham lincoln i didn't know that one mm. either a house without books is like a room without windows and trophies. I think of books as trophies. We've got this big bookcase. They're all there. They are my trophies. And when people come to visit us, they think I'm cleverer than I really am. The more that you read, the more things you will know, the more that you learn, the more places you'll go, which goes back to what you were saying, Miss. It, it is a journey, isn't it? It is a journey. It's an adventure. Not all readers are leaders, but all leaders are readers. That's very true. That's mm. really, really true. Yeah. What's your favourite out of that, Miss? Oh, I quite like all of them, but I definitely think anybody who's been in my house will know that my house is entirely filled with books. There is not a single It's made of books. It is made of books. It really is. There is so many books in my house, in every single room, in every corner, in every crevice. I'm I'm a really annoying reader. I've always got like three or four books on the go at the time, depending on my mood. So yeah. it's like there's, yeah, I've got my kitchen book and I've got my, my loo book and I've got my bedroom book. <laughs> so yeah, it's a good time to read. Rather than scrolling through your phone, take a book with you to the loo. <laughs> As it's World Book Day, uh, Mrs. Stirrup and I have got some really cool facts and fun things that we've learned about books over our combined time <laughs> teaching. So, did you know that Chinese, the Chinese invented paper at around 105 AD? That's 2000, 1900 years ago. A long time. Yeah. I need to create some new shelves in my book, in my, in my, in my house, for my, all my books. But if I had to create a shelf like this, that'd be incredible. Look at this. Each second, there are 57 books are sold. So probably in the time that I've been speaking, I don't know what those, some of the mathematicians do that quickly. Someone figured that out. That someone figured that in one day. One second. It says one day. 
Oh yeah, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> You'd need 78 miles of books, bookshelving to store that amount of books. So that's further than it is to Exeter or even to Truro. It's a long way. It's a it lot is. of books. It is, isn't it's it? a crazy amount of books, isn't it? I wouldn't want to walk that. So this is quite an interesting fact. It's hotly debated. It's rumoured that every single year, the main library at Indiana University sinks about an inch, 2.5 centimetres? About that. About that. From the weight of all the books. However, more recently, um, people have begun to discover that actually that's probably not true. It's one of those um, urban legends that it does actually sink because it's built on a 94 foot thick layer of limestone. So actually the library's not it's not, not sinking. It's not sinking. Where have they got that from then? I don't know. There's a lot of books. Yeah. A lot of books to make it sink. This is a did you know for all you chocolate fans. Uh, did you know? Did you know that Roald Dahl, who wrote Charlie and the Chocolate Factory and lots of other books, used to work at Cadbury's as a chocolate taste tester. That's a pretty good job. I think I, I definitely could do that job. Your daughter would love that job as well. Yeah, I think, I think she would. Yeah. Don't embarrass her. <laughs> <laughs> but but it, doesn't it just show that Whatever you do in life will shape you yeah. in years to come in I ways that read. you can't, can't now imagine. Now I teach English. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's, that's quite an I obvious I used to, to read as well, and not just comics, like I said. Uh... <laughs> so Dr. Seuss, probably a, quite a well-known author. Um, lots of films. Been lots of now. films. Um, but there was a new book that was discovered um, in 2013, and the book is called What Pet Should I Get? And it was published in 2015. But do you know one of his most famous books? Um, is it the, the Grinch? He did write The Grinch, but there's also a more famous one. Um, that's on the next slide. Uh -huh. okay. <laughs> I did know this book, but Miss caught me out because she didn't tell me that that was coming up on the next slide. Green Eggs and Ham is a lovely rhyming book. Uh, and it's, it's a really fun book. There are the 50 words that are used, A, Am, And, Anywhere, B, Boat, Box, Car, Could, Blah, 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 Blah. But it's only 50 words that are used. Yeah, he was challenged. He was challenged to write a book using only 50 words. I like that challenge. I think that we should adopt that and challenge Miss Westwood and Mr Wilkes to that challenge. Do you think, do you use those words or any 50 words of their choice? I think they could use those words. I think they could use those words. Challenge set. A bit more highbrow this time, Mr Stirrup, rather than the uh, green eggs and ham. Mm -hmm. It's been calculated that Charles Dickens used 4.6 million different words. 4.6 different words in his writing. So that's slightly more than the 50 that Dr. Seuss was uh, was using. Um, also- and Lots of semicolons. Lots, lots semicolon and lots, plan. lots of complex sentences in these books. Um, there was a new treat on the market at the time, which is the lollipop. And Charles Dickens was one of the first writers to actually feature that in his stories. Well, who's the first person to talk about lollipops? Yes. And he invented Christmas. He didn't invent Christmas. He made it more popular. There. There's a difference between making something popular and inventing it. Yes. Right, this is one I didn't know. Look at this. Books. Did you know that books helped to build roads? A road in particular. Two and a half million books that were shredded and made into pulp um, uh, were added to the road uh, and the asphalt for part of the M6 road into England. I wonder whose books they were. David Williams? Oh, Mr. Stewart. A couple of different world records for you, um, if you I've got any Guinness Book of Record fans. Um, in 2012, 998 people in Sydney, Australia set a record for the most people balancing books on their heads. Not so hard. Do you reckon we could get a thousand people to go and balance books on their heads? Oh, I reckon we've got some pretty flat-headed people in school. <laughs> I'm not sure if you're allowed to say that, Mr. <laughs> um, A stack of books that was six metres, which is 19 feet and eight inches tall, and stood unsupported for 10 seconds, holds the world record for the tallest stack of books. The thickest book published is 496 millimetres, uh, which is 19.5 inches, and that was achieved in India on the 2nd of February 2020. And the largest book, um, which is hidden by the camera, unfortunately, um, measures five metres by an unknown figure that I cannot now see. Um, but it was it holds the record for being the largest book in the world. So there's not much left for us to say except for happy World Book Day 2022. Um, start your reading adventure today. You never know where it is going to take you. If I had to start with these, I would start with Harry Potter or The Golden Compass. Have you never read Harry Potter? Well, no, I have read Harry Potter. But you can read if it I again. was starting again. Ah. Yeah. Uh, or, and I've read The Golden Compass. Yes. 
and and I've seen and I've read obviously Percy Jackson. Well, we uh, teach that. We you do. You lucky, lucky devils. We do. Um, do you know what I would start with out of these? I would start with this James Patterson book because I love him as an adult author, and he's branching out into teen oh, fiction yeah, yeah, and young adult fiction. And this is dubbed to be a cross between Harry Potter and The Hunger Games, which are two of my kind of favourite books. Harry, so wizards that battle each other to the death. I'm, I'm guessing so. Wow, I'm going to find out. I like it. Ask me soon. Happy World Book Day, everyone. Enjoy.